2011 critically injured three family members, including a five-year-old boy. Pablo Mendez will never be the same again after painful surgeries to save his life. The cause of the explosion? Natural gas. And tonight, we have documents showing the hidden danger under thousands of homes. Every one of these dots you see spread across neighborhoods rich and poor represent the potential for disaster. Channel X Brett Chip joins us now with more on this story. Brett. John and Gloria, four years ago, we exposed the deadly flaws of compression couplings in the Atmos gas distribution system. Tonight, a new warning about another potentially deadly natural gas problem, especially in the older sections of Dallas and Fort Worth. Tonight, News 8 investigates. <laughs> At first glance, the Mendez family of Dallas appears happy and healthy. A closer look, however, reveals a horror they will never escape. For Juliana and Domingo, thick and painful scars on their torso and arms. For young Pablo, a more obvious reminder of September 18th, 2011, a night they all want to forget. Yeah, I just, just felt a ball of fire, you know, just burning. Then a few... I guess a few seconds after that, I just woke up on the floor. The family had just entered their small apartment in southern Dallas, turned on a light, when an explosion blew them to the floor. All three were critically burned and hospitalized in intensive care for weeks. Juliana and Pablo were close to death. I would just hear him crying. Um, it, was, it was terrible. Hours after the explosion, Atmos Energy workers unearthed the clue. A 19-inch fracture in a cast iron gas main in the alley, three feet from their home. An 80-year-old pipe that experts hired by the family say was corroded, brittle, and destined to fail. My gosh, I mean, the age of this and condition of it, it was filthy, it was pitted, it was dirty. It even had roots growing into the inside of it. What does that tell you? It's had holes in it for years and years and years. Don Deaver is a former pipeline safety expert for Exxon. He says this particular cast iron pipe had been leaking for some time. Leaks in the line were later found up and down the alley. Deaver says Atma should have known that the pipe would fail, just like thousands of other cast iron pipes in the Atmos, Texas system have done for decades. You are looking at logs of cast iron leaks in the Atmos system over the past four years. More than 2,300 leak repairs, mostly in older neighborhoods in South, East, and Uptown Dallas, even in Highland and University Park. Older sections of Fort Worth are also heavily impacted. What's more, Deaver says cast iron pipes have a lethal legacy of failure. This is an obsolete, inferior, degraded material that over time sees more and more things pulling and stressing out and causing it to fail. It's, it's a collision course. It's a perfect storm. In January of last year, an Austin man was killed when a cast iron pipe corroded and cracked, leaking natural gas into his home, which later exploded. Morning, 2011, Allentown, Pennsylvania. A cast iron pipe installed in 1928 was responsible for an explosion that killed five. It's a problem that Atmos and other gas companies have known about for decades. In 1973, the National Transportation Safety Board, which regulates gas transmission lines, warned gas companies about corrosion of cast iron mains and to take necessary action. In 1985, the NTSB took a bolder step, warning gas companies of cast iron main failures and recommended that all cast iron mains should be phased out. In 1992, another NTSB advisory recommending gas industry operators adopt cast iron piping replacement programs. Intex, now called Centerpoint, did exactly that, removing all of the cast iron pipes from the city of Houston. The city's entire natural gas distribution system has been cast iron free since the early 90s. Meanwhile, Atmos still has 841 miles, more than 2% of its entire Texas system made up of cast iron. The vast majority still under the alleys and streets in Dallas. Atmos Energy has repeatedly declined to provide News 8 with a map of where the cast iron pipes are located. Clay Miller represents the Mendez family, which sued and has now settled with Atmos. I think the citizens of Dallas have an absolute right 
and they should know where this cast iron is because I think if more people knew that it was in their backyard, in their alley, and under their streets, the uproar after this type of incident would be so great that hopefully it would cause these cast iron pipes to get out of the ground. Atmos Energy declined an on-camera interview to discuss the Mendez explosion and its aging cast iron system. In a statement to News 8, Atmos said its natural gas system is safe and reliable that it monitors and surveys its pipelines at a frequency that meets or exceeds government standards. Atmos also says it has a proactive pipe replacement program developed in compliance with state and federal regulatory entities. Yet last November, the Texas Railroad Commission issued Atmos a notice of violation in connection with the Mendez explosion. The reason? Atmos had no cast iron replacement program in place. In fact, in a recent legal deposition, an Atmos representative testified there is no proactive cast iron replacement program in Mendez. Meanwhile, young Pablo is just days away from another surgery to help his face and hands heal. What may never heal, however, is the fear his parents still feel, not knowing if the gas main behind their new house is cast iron and waiting to fail. Makes me, uh, <laughs> well, it makes us pretty scared still. Again, since Atmos would not provide us with a map of all the cast iron in its system, what we've done is taken the information that we have and we have put it on our website into an interactive map that you can go to. So you go to our website, WFAA.com, you click on the map and up will pop, you will see the all of the little clusters, these are each, well, these red dots is where a cast iron pipe has broken and been repaired. At any place there's a cluster, it tells you that there is probably still cast iron in the ground. So I will just go in here and just click on, let's say, any point in Highland Park, and up pops a leak that was detected on January 5th of 2012. It was repaired a month later at 3637 Stratford Avenue. All this on our website plus a search engine where you can plug in your own address to find out again where clusters of cast iron pipe is located. The bottom line is if you smell gas in your neighborhood, call Atmos, call the fire department, be hyper vigilant, use your nose and use your head. Brett Ship, Channel 8 News. Investigation into Friday's fatal gas explosion in Louisville is just beginning. But tonight, one critic says the explosion has troubling similarities to another back in 2008. A ruptured gas line and a failure to evacuate nearby homes. And again, a fatal explosion more than an hour after the gas company was notified of a leak. Our Brett Ship covered that story as well, and he joins us now with details. Brett? John and Gloria, that fatal 2008 explosion was in McKinney. Atmos Energy was found at fault and fined for not doing more to save lives. Now another line strike, another explosion, and another death. Did Atmos do enough to protect the public this time? Tonight, News 8 investigates. May of 2008, a contractor in a McKinney neighborhood accidentally struck a three-inch underground gas main. More than an hour passed and no homes had been evacuated when suddenly, First one, then another exploded. Enough gas had seeped underground to fill the homes and ignite. Attorney Clay Miller represented one of the homeowners who suffered life threatening burns. He was never warned. Uh, no one ever knocked on his door and said there's a leak outside. No one ever said you, you may need to evacuate their house. Uh, he was given no warning whatsoever. Atmos Energy and its contractor were fined $80,000 by the state. Company president John Paris told the public back then Atmos is obligated to learn and prevent this in the future. Now, four and a half years later in Louisville, a very similar set of circumstances. An electric company strikes a larger four inch gas main. Firefighters evacuate homes downwind, but 55 year old Scott Deal is allowed to stay in his home just 50 feet away upwind from the leak. Two and a half hours go by when his house explodes. Three days later, he died. Louisville fire officials say they evacuated homes based only on wind patterns. They say they were never told by Atmos of a potential underground gas migration threat. That despite Atmos being warned by state officials in 2008 
The sewer system is a critical system that must be checked for gas migration because it has a direct path to homes. What the lesson that, that was learned in that, that Atmos should have learned, was that even if you have a leak that is far away from a structure, that gas will tend to find its way through sewer lines, water lines, sewer cleanouts, and find its way in and under these, these buildings. The cause of the explosion is still under investigation, and no determination has been made of how gas traveled the short distance to Deal's home. Atmos crews were testing the ground for gas before the explosion. Atmos officials dismiss any connection to the 2008 McKinney explosion. Quote, each incident is unique in nature, and the circumstances of one event cannot be compared to another, particularly when third parties are involved. Now, third party gas line ruptures and leaks are very common and a big problem. If one occurs within feet or even a few hundred yards of your home and you know about it, don't wait to be evacuated. Open windows and get to fresh air and wait until authorities tell you the coast is clear. Brett Ship, Channel 8 News. Tonight, Atmos Energy is denying it violated state regulations in a Dallas house explosion that critically injured three people. That explosion and the decaying cast iron pipes involved are the subject of an ongoing News 8 investigation. Good evening, everyone. I'm Gloria Campos. I'm John McKay. While Atmos says that it continues to exceed pipeline safety standards, others are coming forward with some new questions for the gas company. Reporter Brett Schiff has more as News 8 investigates. How safe does this look to you? Uh, any moment it could blow up. Sheik Tahuti of Dallas wants the public to see this an old Atmos gas pipeline precariously perched across a ravine on his land, 50 feet in the air, anchored by a rusty cable. This is just ridiculous. Only if it had a support under the bottom, because everything is dependent on a cable holding tons that don't have any support. The pipeline is located just a few yards from Tahuti's horse stables and the grounds where children ride ponies every week. He's so upset, he's produced a video expressing his terror anytime the creek floods and debris comes crashing up against that pipeline. Atmos has not responded to our questions about the pipe, but it has responded to pipeline regulators at the Texas Railroad Commission about this. I turn on the light. And that's when it just sparked up. The 2011 gas explosion that critically injured Domingo Mendez, his wife, and little boy. A few feet from the Mendez destroyed home, an 80 year old decaying cast iron pipe with a 19 inch crack in it. The state cited Atmos for violating safety standards by not having a cast iron replacement program in place. Mendez family attorney Clay Miller has sued and settled with Atmos over this very issue. This is absolutely a preventable accident. Uh, the entire industry, including Atmos, has known for decades that these pipes corrode. Atmos' response to the safety violation has just been filed with the state. Quote, natural gas leaking from the gas main did not cause the Mendez explosion. It says a leak behind the kitchen gas range is probably the leak source. And despite the age and condition of the cast iron pipe that was leaking gas prior to the explosion, Atmos contends there was nothing to suggest this segment of pipe needed to be replaced. Atmos says it has replaced 144 miles of cast iron pipe in its Texas system over the past 12 years. Yet 841 miles remains in the ground, most of it in older neighborhoods in Dallas, Fort Worth, and the Park Cities. Atmos says it will continue to survey and monitor its system and replace any segments it feels are unsafe. Tahuti asks, if this is not unsafe, then what is? This is a time bomb in my backyard. Brett Ship, Channel 8 News. Two of Dallas's top public officials tonight are asking Atmos Energy to speed up removal of a dangerous and decaying cast iron pipes in North Texas. Now, the call to action comes in the wake of a News 8 investigation into what lies beneath the streets of Dallas and Tarrant counties. Our Brett Ship joins us now with the latest on that. Brett? Gloria and John, ordinarily, it's the job of the Texas Railroad Commission, the agency that regulates oil and gas in Texas, 
to ensure that pipelines are safe. But in the case of decaying cast iron pipes still in the Atmos system, it's Dallas County Judge Clay Jenkins and Mayor Mike Rawlings who tonight say they want Atmos to take aggressive action to protect the public as News 8 investigates. I immediately called Atmos the next day. That's Dallas County Judge Clay Jenkins' response to what he had just seen last week on News 8. The Mendez family of Dallas, who will forever wear the physical and emotional scars of surviving a gas explosion that ripped through their home in September of 2011. Just feet from their demolished home, an 80 year old cracked and leaking cast iron gas main. That section of pipe is just a fraction of the more than 800 miles of decaying cast iron pipes still under the alleys and streets in the Atmos, Texas system, the vast majority of it in Dallas County. Due to a series of explosions and deaths, the federal government began recommending the removal of cast iron pipes back in the 1970s. Jenkins says what got his attention was News 8's interactive map on WFAA.com pinpointing 2,300 cast iron leak repairs in the Atmos system in the past four years. It's my opinion that um, Atmos needs to provide us with conclusive evidence that this pipe is safe and failing to do so, they need to remove it from the ground as soon as possible. Jenkins says he has been in almost daily contact with Atmos Energy bosses over the past week, negotiating a plan to expedite removal of cast iron from the ground from 20 miles last year to 50 miles this year. And I wanted to know what the plans were uh, for replacement of that pipe, and I wanted to know if it was actually being uh, dug up and tested in the various neighborhoods of Dallas County and I wanted to see an aggressive testing uh, protocol in place until the pipe could be removed. Dallas Mayor Mike Rawlings has also been involved in the dialogue and says he wants the city to coordinate with Atmos to speed up pipe removal. You know, there's a lot of things that go on in our streets all the time. Is there some way that the left hand can help the right hand in getting this accomplished? Atmos today issued a statement saying, quote, we have been working with the city of Dallas, Dallas County, and the city of Fort Worth to clarify our pipe replacement program for 2013 and beyond. And Atmos says it will spend $25 million to replace cast iron pipe, doubling the amount we spent in 2012. The gas distribution company in Houston, Intex, replaced its entire network of cast iron pipes in the early 90s. Judge Jenkins says the citizens of Dallas County should not have to wait decades more for Atmos to do the same. And whenever there's a risk of harm to uh, the citizens of Dallas County, uh, then I feel compelled to, to uh, speak up for the citizens of Dallas County. While the Texas Railroad Commission has cited Atmos for not having a cast iron pipe replacement program, the commission has declined to discuss with us its concerns or plan of action. As for the cast iron concerns in Fort Worth, Mayor Betsy Price says Atmos Energy has assured her her residents are in safe hands. Brett Ship, Channel 8 News. All right, Brett. Now we have that interactive map posted for you right now, WFA.com. You can type in your city, zoom down to your street to find out which pipes have been repaired near you.